Congresswoman Slotkin. Welcome back to Meet the Press. Thanks for having me. Look, you're one of, uh, I think, let me get my numbers right here, seven House Democrats. There's just seven. Shows you how polarized we are. Representing a district that Trump won in 2020. Yeah. Uh, I want to put together, I want to show you some numbers from independents that we saw on, on, on President Biden. That is, he on the issue of compromise. Has he been too willing, too unwilling? Right balance. Among independents, uh, a large majority, 55%, believe the president's been too unwilling to compromise. Does that... You're a district that obviously has an independent mind. You won, Trump won. Is this what you're hearing? I do. I mean, I think that people in general are kind of questioning whether government still works for them. And so we should be doing a couple of things really, really well and then talking about it over and over and over again so people know we did it, mm -hmm. as opposed to saying we're going to do everything, promising the world, and then not getting all of that done. People leave feeling like, well, look, my government isn't doing anything for me. So I, I think we're in a, a crisis when it comes to people believing in government, and the best thing we can do is govern effectively. All right. So what do you want the president to do in the next six weeks? Because you could argue that because if it's an even number, dear, you know this, maybe you only have Till the uh, till April one to truly get some legislation done. What should the focus be? Yeah, I mean, I think for me, the issues are, that are always going to resonate: the cost of prescription drugs. Right? Mm -hmm. Just allow Medicare to negotiate for drug prices. It was in different versions of bills. Like it's a common sense thing. And that unites progressives. That's something you just heard Senator Sanders about. This actually unites the Democratic coalition. It's not issue. a Democratic coalition, by the yeah. way. Like it just doesn't make any sense that Medicare can't negotiate drug prices. President Trump wanted it. Right. I think, so supposedly. let's do that. Yeah. Um, I think universal pre-kindergarten for th for three-year-olds and four-year-olds. Like right now, you're worried about the economy. We don't have enough people working. You unleash a huge amount of people into the economy if we can get reliable child care. So do discrete things well. Don't try and promise the moon. And, and I, I just come from the school. I'm, you know, a CIA officer and a Pentagon official, like under promise and over deliver. And we haven't been doing that. Um, there seems to be a lot of public highlighting of Democratic division. Yeah. Uh, it, it, you, you, we were talking earlier, you, you weren't crazy about having to air some of this dirty laundry, but it's happening. What's happening to Senator Cinema? Is, is this healthy for the party? Having a state party, her own state party, censure her? Like I said, most people will look at what they're censuring her over is over a disagreement on tactics, not on the issue. Yeah, I, I don't I just just don't come from a school where you're constantly airing dirty laundry. Like mm -hmm. there are really big divisions in Washington right now, period, Democrat, Republican within each party. Um, but I just don't believe that the way that you get back at other people is by putting that on air, airing that publicly. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't love that. Um, I also don't think that, you know, if we if we disagree with someone, that's a normal part of governing. Mm -hmm. People just want people to be responsible. So I, I don't love it. Uh, but I, I also that's not what people in my district are worrying about. Do you right question now. the motives of, of Senators Manchin and Cinema for their disagreements? No, on this? I, I don't. I, I think um, uh, someone once told me when I started Congress, mm -hmm. you know, you can question someone's policy choices. Right. Don't question their motives because we're all here. I hope to do the right thing or we should be. You have a district that actually has got a lot of parts of what I would say is the Biden coalition that got him the primary union folks. Mm -hmm. He was ended up being a. Uh, working class folks, African-Americans. What are you hearing? Let's start with union members uh, and African-Americans. What are you hearing from them on what they're saying about uh, either at the Democratic Party these days? Well, look, people don't wake up in my district like real political people. They're right. not, you know, here in Washington. They're probably, you know, not watching this show right now. They're waking up and they're talking about the price of groceries, yep. the price of gas. They're talking about crime, right, and, and concerns about security. They're talking about whether their kids are going to be able to stay in school. Um, those are the things that are the people are talking about. And I think that's, in my mind, what the White House should be laser focused on. And, and I get it. There's a there's a big coalition. We got a lot of people that are interested in a lot of different things. But in my mind, like, where's the war room on the cost of living? Right. Where's the task force on inflation? Where are the where's the energy around that? Because that's what everyone is talking about when I sit down with them. And when it comes to covid covid, we know for everybody is the wet blanket. Mm -hmm. For different reasons, it's the wet blanket. Yeah. Is there anything the administration can do more proactively on COVID? Or is, is the fact that there looks like they're taking a little bit of a step back the right call as far as uh, the politics of COVID? Is you know, if, it, if, it, if, if we had... If we could, I would say let's let's kind of enter a new phase on COVID mm -hmm. and keep our kids in school, keep our businesses open, focus on keeping our world 
open. Mm -hmm. Um, But our hospitals are like war zones right now, right? We don't have enough subs when our teachers get COVID. So we can't forget about it. We can't change and sort of say that's not our business when the institutions that hold our communities up. Should that be what Congress focuses on right now? A little more, is COVID relief going to be necessary? What's happening? I mean, school bus drivers, but it's it's not just that. It's across the board here. Is, is, should Congress step in here with more relief? Uh, I don't, I mean, honestly, the COVID relief, at least in my state, that we passed back in March is sitting in the bank account of the state of Michigan. The state of Michigan has like literally $4 billion. Should they be using they can, this for substitute yes, teachers? Yes, Are our, they, hello, hello, yeah. Michigan State Senate and state Senate. It's like, yeah. move, get off your duff, you know, get that money out um, so that we can pay more for subs in our schools, so that we can get more folks, nurses and doctors um, that I don't know that we need another package because the money we've spent hasn't been used already on the ground. All right. Alyssa Slotkin, a Democrat uh, from Michigan. Thanks for coming on and sharing your perspective with us.